Today on Writing Done Right, we want to talk about the coming of GIMP 3.0, the wonderful changes that they've made to this excellent software application. Welcome back to Writing Done Right. I am Thomas Morosky, an author and a technology consultant. And here we like to teach you the nuts and the bolts of writing a book, maybe the motivation and how to get them actually into the market. Today we want to cover a software application that is critical if you want to do your own book covers or maybe even thumbnails or any form of image processing. So this is of course GIMP. So we want to cover a couple things here. We're going to cover just some talking head portions of this and then we're actually going to go to the computer. I'm going to show you what the next version of GIMP is going to look like from their current alpha 2 and uh, we'll get a chance to get a taste for what this application can do. Obviously if you want to see more in-depth tutorials, I have tutorials on using GIMP on this channel how to do book covers, how to lay things out, all those different nuts and bolts. And uh, I have more detailed general tutorials on my other channel, which I will link those, uh, the playlist for those uh, down below. So what is GIMP? GIMP is a, an application. It is a an acronym for GNU Image Manipulator Program. And that first word GNU is a Linux, like a, not Linux specifically, but a free and open source term. Uh, basically, this is a application that is free to use, it is free to download, and it is free to edit and modify. You can see what the source code is, you can change it around a little bit, you can use this application without having to pay an annual subscription fee like you get with Photoshop or a big download fee or other restrictions. So it will do a lot of the things, in fact, most of the things that Photoshop will do, obviously your Photoshop purists will say, it's horrible and it can't do things and stuff like that. It's a bunch of nonsense. Have a look at the books on my system. All of my book covers are done entirely using GIMP. All the thumbnails on my channel are entirely using GIMP. It is a little bit of a different workflow. If you know how to use Photoshop, GIMP will be a little bit different. And also to keep in mind, GIMP is a much more complicated ap application like Photoshop. Photoshop. It is not something that you're going to pop open for the very first time and know how to use it. You're going to have to spend some time doing tutorials, but once you learn how to use the system, once you learn how it works, this is a powerful free image editor. And like all of these free and open source systems, they're not forcing you to pay for it. It would be really nice if you're benefiting from it and you can they always have links to their donation pages directly on their site. You can donate to the project, which helps keep the project around. So why do you need this as an author? GIMP is excellent, as I said, for book covers. Whether you're talking about the digital book covers for an ebook or the full wraparound cover that you need to produce your book and send it to the printer to actually get printed out, GIMP can do all of these things. You can also use it for thumbnails. I use them for the thumbnails for these videos. So if you have a YouTube channel or maybe you're doing a podcast and you need a thumbnail for your podcast episodes or you just need a, an image edited in some way for a blog post or something else, you can use it. Any type of image work that you need, GIMP can probably handle it. It is a very complicated layers deep system with lots of options, but if you just need a pull it open for a couple simple image manipulations, it's easy enough to do that as well. Like I said, I don't want to scare you away from it. I just don't want to set an expectation that you're going to open the software up and instantly know what you're doing. It's going to take a little bit of time. Have a look at that tutorial playlist on my other channel or the ones related to them here. Also, you need it because there's no monthly subscription fees. Adobe Photoshop used to be prohibitively expensive to buy, thousands of dollars. Now they're switching to a subscription model which you could pay hundreds of dollars uh, per year. That might be a little out of your budget. If you're a young author, you're just starting out, maybe you're in retirement and you're just doing books for fun, you may not want to shell out a massive subscription fee for a image editing application, this will handle all of those tasks that you need. Unless you're like doing things in the, the upper echelon, the upper 1% of image editing professionally in the field of graphic design, 
uh, you might need Photoshop in that case. GIMP is going to work on all of your other circumstances. As far as your downsides, I do want to paint on Honest Picture. In the downsides, it is a complicated application. There are lots and lots and lots of tutorials online. If you don't like my tutorials, just type in GIMP tutorials on YouTube and you will have an endless, endless hours of tutorials from everything from how the basic layout is set up to doing very fine, minute, really neat things with the application. The, the limits are boundless. It is, however, a complicated application. You're going to spend a little bit of time learning how to use it. The other thing is there have been some discussions and it is a valid criticism mostly in the past about managing color profiles. So color profiles, of course, if you're sending something to the printer, it has to know how to read the colors. There's some discussion, of course, when you're doing when you're doing graphic design, if you're doing images, if you're if it's a screen, some form of screen system, then you actually want an RGB, which is a more emission type light. If you're doing print applications, you want to use CMYK, which is a reflection based color lighting scheme. And so in light of this, GIMP generally works with RGB color profiles. In the latest recent editions, they have added some CMYK exporting options. However, the other reason this is not really a deal is for at least the last decade, the printers don't really care about the color profiles being used in your system. They do perfectly fine. Once again, if you buy a copy of one of my books and look at it physically in your hand, it looks perfect and beautiful. There is no difference between any of the dozens of books that I have printed holding it in my hand, there is no difference between how they look on the screen and how they look on the system. So that's not really a, uh, that's not really something that, that we really have to worry about. Now, at this point in time in the video, we're gonna jump on over to the computer. So I'm gonna be using my, uh, one of my Linux Mint computers and I have installed the upcoming 3.0 version. It is not completely out yet at the time I'm releasing this video. It is right around the corner. And I wanna talk about specifically four major, major changes coming to the latest version of GIMP. Of course, you can turn many of these features off if you do not like them, but we are going to highlight those on the computer. Here we are on Linux Mint 22.0 and we are on GIMP 3.0 Release Candidate 2. This video is not a tutorial about how to use GIMP. So if you're lost in all these things, have a look at the link in the description for uh, some specific videos, either dive directly into authors or over on my other channel, more general tutorials about GIMP, using it, the setup, and things like that. I just want to show you here some of the things that are changing. The first of which is an overall speed performance. Things are working a lot better, a lot smoother. Obviously, can't show you a specific thing for that. Just keep in mind how quickly things will move as we go through. So we'll just create a new image here, and we're going to add some text to it and make it big enough to see. So what you notice over here is under your layers, you have a new FX column. This is your non-destructive layer edits we're going to work with. So you can come down here and you can do things like a drop shadow. Now, depending on which version of GIMP you've used last, they've actually added a stroke feature in here. So you used to have to do a lot of more complicated things to get some stroke features going. And uh, that was a little bit on the annoying side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set your drop shadow to zero. We're going to set our blur radius down. We're just going to put it at two for now. Um, and then our glow radius at zero. Actually, I think I need our blur radius at zero. Put our glow radius up at two. And then select the color that you want for your stroke. And now you can set, and let's go ahead and set the opacity up as at one as well. So now you can see that you can actually add stroke to text directly inside of here. So you don't uh, have to do shadowing differently. Of course, you can actually add these as shadows as well. Just be aware you can stroke text much more easily now. What we do have, though, is inside of our layer options is now we have the ability to turn these on or turn these off. 
And if you want, these are not destructive edits here. Let's go ahead and come over here. Let's go texting. There you go. So you can see that we add extra text. And whereas GIMP before would give you a warning and a notice and you got to convert this back to image and then you'll lose all the effects. Now everything is all done separately. There is a bug in this. Hopefully the GIMP team spots this. Maybe I'll check to see if it's listed on the bug logs or not. But if you add a second effect, it will take the second effect. I'm just going to go and grab a previous effect I've used. But what you'll notice it does is you'll notice over here it crops off part of this. So the second effect does some interfering with the with the first effect. Now you can actually adjust these around and change their location. So here what we've done is we've inverted the two effects. So we have our glowing there. But you'll still notice down this way on the other side of the text a little bit of these hard lines here indicating that there is still some issue with the way the system is rendering. So hopefully that gets fixed, but uh, this is definitely a, a huge adjustment. And if I want to test and experiment with different layer styles, you can see that I can do that non-destructively on the fly. This here will merge. It doesn't just merge the filters down. It merges the filters down onto the whole layer itself. So you'll see that it is no longer a text layer. And so that's kind of a little bit of a problematic thing there as well. It just does a little bit than what I was expecting. Maybe that's intentional. But that's really the first of the major changes. The next one is we have dynamic, dynamic guides. And so we'll just duplicate this layer here and uh, make sure we're on our move option and we can move things around. Now, by default, what we want to do here is we want to turn this on. So this is under view and snap to bounding boxes. This is a feature that Photoshop has had for a while. This is new to GIMP. As you're dragging things around, you will get these lines appearing on the screen that will line up the elements relative to each other. So this really makes lining things up a whole lot better uh, than what it has been. Usually I'd have to use the align and distribute option, which they have completely changed the way this works. If you're used to using this, I'm not going to go into exactly how it goes. Hopefully it's an error what they did, but they made it a lot harder to use. But that's how you used to have to align things. Now we can actually turn on guides so I can kind of see myself using that align layers less and less now that we have this as a new feature. And the last one of the major changes we see is layer sets. We have a little bit more control. Now you've always had the ability to go in and uh, hit a new layer. Uh, it's kind of down here as well. You can see a new layer group and then you can drag your layers into your layer group. You've always had the ability to do this and do some manipulations, but you couldn't move everything together. If you wanted to move all these groups together, they are still behaving independently inside the layer group. You'd have to go in and lock them together to each other. Um, which shoot, I may not even be able to do right here inside of the group itself. So I'm going to go ahead and move them out of the layer groups to show you what the new feature is. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer group. So, okay, we, we have multiple different types of locks now. So we can lock position and size, I think. They're adding a lot of different things. So I can't even move these layers anymore by, by doing that. So if I come up here... Let's see, lock these. So that prevents us from locking. Let's see what that one was. That locks the visibility, locking the alpha, and the lock the pixels. So we actually, they removed the ability that we had, and you can set multiple locks at a time. I used to be able to lock and link these two together with this box here, allowing me to move these guys together. We can't do that anymore. That function has been taken out. But what we do have is we have the ability to do new uh, a new multi-layer and then we can link layers together. So now when I have two layers selected, I should be able to move them both simultaneously. Two layers selected and we do have to come over to our layer and move the selected layers, not the pick a layer or guide, which was the default. 
Okay, so we can now move multiple layers. Obviously, you can't get in there and do deletion or editing or different things with it. But the other thing we can do is with our multiple layers selected is we can create a layer, um, a layer group. So hit this magnifying glass and under the plus, let's just say text and hit uh, hit add. And so now, no matter what we're on, if we come up here and hit select the text, it's going to automatically select both of those layers at the same time again. So you can set your layer groups that way instead of using the folders, which might interfere with how your design elements are. Um, and uh, the lock option is no longer an option how we used to lock them uh, to each other. So the downside of this new system is I didn't find a way to add another layer into an existing group and we don't have documentation on this feature yet. So hopefully uh, we get the ability to add a feature in so I don't have to keep on recreating and deleting groups as I want to add or remove things into the features. But those are some of the upcoming changes inside of GIMP. Let me know if uh, you have used these features, if uh, these are features you're looking for or not. But uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. Now that you have seen a little bit about what GIMP can do, I'm going to go ahead and walk through one last point. Where do you get GIMP? Uh, so you can use the current version of GIMP that is available, which is in the 2.9 series. Or if you want, you can just start using the beta. It is stable enough. There are a couple little bugs with it, a couple little odds and ends that still need ironed out. But uh, depending on what you need, you could probably use either at this point in time. Uh, just know that the current release version is generally always going to be a little bit more stable. Now, I'm going to give this warning because there is a huge amount of malware being spread on the internet right now if you're downloading things from inappropriate sources. So only download GIMP from their official website. It is a free application. You do not need it bundled with something else. You don't need to find it on download.com. You don't need to find it on any other website. You gotta find it from GIMP's website. I will have a direct link to their website in the description of this video. That's where you want to download it if you are on Windows or if you are on Mac. Now, if you are on Linux, of course, you can download from this uh, from there. But if you are on Linux, you want to use it from the repository or from the Flatpak repository. Those two packaged by GIMP and audited by the team are going to be your best way of installing it. So there is our brief look. Hopefully this tutorial will help you to get your writing 